Welcome to Wrestling With Heart, a podcast looking at pro wrestlers giving back to their community. Join me, Stanley Carr, as I interview wrestling's hottest names who use their platforms as entertainers to raise awareness and do community service. Hello and welcome to another edition of Wrestling With Heart. This is the show where we talk with professional wrestlers and professional wrestling personalities about their lives in and outside of the ring, as well as doing acts of charity work, community service, volunteering, and helping others and spreading positivity and motivation. We're always about positive vibes here on the show. And with me today, I've got a very special guest. She is one of the newest members of WOW Superheroes Women of Wrestling. She has wrestled on the independents as Nikki Duke. And uh, she is now known as Ariel Sky. Ariel, welcome to Wrestling With Heart. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. I'm yeah. really excited to chat with you today. Yeah, it's my pleasure. So you're from New Jersey. I was doing a little bit of research uh, about <laughs> you. Uh, tell me about your upbringing and childhood. Um, wow. Okay. So yeah, I am from New Jersey. Um, I come from a relatively large Italian family. Um, so my upbringing was quite wonderful. Um, lots of food, lots of family, lots of fighting always because family. Um <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like I suppose everyone was just really in everyone's business in my family, but like in the best way, you know, we're all always around each other. So, um, that was family aspect. So I love a good team. Um, I believe that's why I love wow women of wrestling so well, because it's just such a close knit family, you know, not everyone gets along. Um, but that's. Again, in any family, y'all are going to fight and everything. But um, I I always jo uh, say I come from a very, like, normal upbringing. But um, I suppose that's just different from each person. Um, my, my family was very supportive in everything since I was little. Um, I mean, my upbringing, my wrestling story, if you will, started at a very young age. I started gymnastics since I was four. Um, so my family has always been super supportive in that sense of, Hey, go out and do what you want to do, um, with, you know, gymnastics, hobbies, what it might be. But also I feel like, um, it helped me a lot in life because they were also told me, Hey, like, we don't want you to ever quit anything, but if it no longer suits you, you are allowed to stop pursuing it. And I think, I think at a young age, knowing that and going into something because um, like with gymnastics, for example, I um, had a lot of girls on team once I got older that they were just telling me like, hey, I hate this. Um, my body is giving out, but my family won't let me quit. And my family kind of just was so supportive, you know, ever since I was little, like, hey, when you no longer like this, let us know. And it's OK. You don't have to continue. So yeah, my upbringing was a lot of family, a lot of food. Um, you know, we traveled a lot. A lot of it was looking back now was like for gymnastics meets and stuff. We would make a whole to do out of it. But oh, God, I love my family. And I would say I had a very, very um, positive upbringing. I love to hear that. Really, it's amazing. So you got into yeah. what? What really, you know, inspired you to get into gymnastics? <laughs> well, um, I suppose that's a funny story. I I suppose I didn't really have an option in the sense of I was four. So any normal four-year-old, I was bouncing off the freaking walls. Literally, my mother's my mother's house growing up, or my house growing up, antiques everywhere. My mother loves antiques and like little like um like just stuff everywhere. So my brother is two years older than I am, and um, I suppose he's kind of how I got into wrestling. So him and I were always, like, fighting, running around the house, and it was actually my mother's best friend at the time, our neighbor. She went to um, a tricky tray. Also, I realized not a lot of people know what a, a tricky tray is. Apparently, only a New Jersey thing. What it basically is is a charity event um, for like you host it either at like the high school or elementary school just to like raise money for said event. And then um, each business can contribute like a basket. So the basket that um, 
my mother's friend had one was for this place called Diamond Gymnastics. And at the time she had a bunch of, I think she had three sons and they were all in soccer. So she called my mother and she's like, uh, Denise, like I got this basket for gymnastics. Like, would Nicole be interested in doing it? And my mother was like, oh, like I need something for this kid. She will not stop bouncing off the wall. So that one free tricky tray gymnastics class costs my parents a lifetime of gymnastics. But that is kind of how I fell into it. I would say my whole life has almost been kind of a happy accident, if you will, because it was almost like I wasn't supposed to do it, but, you know, she didn't know what to do with this. So that's kind of how it happened. And I love it. So it was I don't recall my first day. I won't lie. I was four, but I remember my first memory just falling in love and kind of being like, how can I do this forever? And I feel I feel like within reason, I've kind of found that, um, which is so beautiful. I have intertwined wrestling now with gymnastics and I can do this. uh, I mean, forever is a very long time. My shoulders are giving out and but you understand yeah. the gist of it. Yeah. So yeah. It it seems like, you know, there's a lot that goes into gymnastics that you can parlay into wrestling. It yeah. kind of goes hand in hand. Were you always like big into sports? Did you play any other sports growing up? Yes and no. So I did gymnastics um since I was four and then um Throughout high school, I um, suffered a knee injury. So I think around like eighth grade, I had to stop. And um, I just kind of wanted a quote unquote, um, it's funny to say now, but a normal life. I was um, in high school growing up when I was in high school, I was just kind of like, you know, like, I don't really want gymnastics. I want to like, hang out with my friends and do stuff, I guess. Um So I did softball and lacrosse for a hot second, but it just, it was fun, but I just knew I just didn't want to do it. So I did that for a little bit, but then um, I always came back to gymnastics. I, um, after high school, my first, my first real job, if you will, I started coaching gymnastics. So I was still around it. Yeah. Yeah. I could never escape it. (laughs) No, it seems like it's in the blood. Like when you're into something like that, you know, you carry it on with you, you know, throughout your life. So it's amazing. Any fun stories you want to share about meets that you've gone on uh, with gymnastics and then like any advice that you were given by your trainers that kind of stick with you? So one of my coaches, he is still near and dear to my heart. Um, His name is Juan. I talk to him relatively often still. He lives in Colombia now. Um, But I remember, I remember at one of the meets we, I was doing some event, I think it was vault. And I just remember I was like, Hey, like my, my knee feels really weird. Like this doesn't feel right. And he was like, Oh, suck it up. Stop being a baby. And like, I feel like nowadays it's, I grew up with that kind of coaching. My coaches were either Russians or from Colombia. And it was very like in your face. Around the world, international. Yeah, like your good isn't good enough to do better. So it's like, I kind of like that coaching. Still positive, you know, they weren't like abusive to us by any means. But they were very like in your face, like do better, do better. And I just remember, he's like, quit being a baby. And I was like, oh, okay, like whatever. And I like finished the meet and then like, the next few days, I actually um, was like talking to my mother and I was like, I, I don't feel right. My knee feels weird. And we ended up going to the doctor and I ended up tearing my n- meniscus and like slight ACL tear. So I finished the gymnastics meet and like the next day I come to practice and my coach like sees me like not like dressed and like ready. And he's like, what's wrong? And then like my mother came in and she's like, Juan, like, like Nicole, like tore her like meniscus and ACL. And he's like, oh, like she wasn't really being a baby. Like I, you finished the gymnastics meet and I was just yelling at you. Like, I'm sorry, but like, good for you. Like patting me on the back. And he's like, you'll be back soon. And I'm just like, I feel like that moment really, I I don't want to say shaped me as a person or as an athlete, because I, by no means do I mean like if you tore something or broke something, keep going, um, you know, like kind of address the situation. But at this age, I hate to say like, it sounds silly, but I just was like, you get used to such a high pain tolerance because uh, your body's constantly in pain a little bit. Right. So it just, 
Um, I suppose in that moment where it was just like, oh, like, you know, really mind over matter, like, again, not encouraging anyone to go out there that has a torn ligament or anything to continue. But um, funny story, man, like a lot of my practices, um, one of my favorite stories was all of the girls, it was summer. So we, we tended to be at practice sometimes five, six hours in the summer because there's no school. So they would just drop us off. And I guess you would just be done when you were done. And a lot of the girls, I hated bars, the uneven bars. I just was not good at them. So naturally I just didn't like them. And my coach was like, okay, like, what do you guys want to do today? And like all three of us at once were like, just like no bars. And he's like, okay. So we like get a little snack, come back. And we did the uneven bars for five hours because we said we did not want to do them. So um, I always just, that story is just special to me. Cause I'm like, oh, okay. Um, you can't avoid things you're not good at. Let's just do them all of the time. And I try to play that into my life or with wrestling, you know, something, I don't want to say, I don't necessarily like, I wouldn't say it's not that I don't like something, but sometimes in wrestling, I'm like, oh, maybe let me avoid this style yeah. because I'm not good at it. But instead maybe just push, push through and, you know, see what works best. Yeah, absolutely. You got to find what's comfortable to you, you know, yes. find your strengths and weaknesses. And you, you've also done some bodybuilding too. Like what, what kind of got you into that as well? <laughs> well, so my brain works in very interesting and mysterious ways. So, um, so backtrack a little bit. I had just said, um, I believe my first knee surgery was maybe seventh, eighth grade. Then, um, I still needed something. I didn't really have a sport. So my gymnastics coach, Juan, um, I stayed in touch with him and um, I wasn't on the team anymore, but he was still allowing me to come to practice to just do the conditioning and all of that. Then unfortunately I had another knee surgery, maybe like senior year. Um, So I fell in this depressive um, state for I hate to say more years than I would like to think of. Um, I just felt like something was missing. I didn't know. I didn't know what, because I knew gymnastics was no longer an option. I was very honest with myself from a young age. I knew I wasn't going to go to the Olympics. Like that wasn't a goal of mine. And um, I feel like that's fine as long as you're very honest. Um, So then I felt kind of lost in high school in the sense of like, okay, like, what's next? What am I doing with my life? Um, and I had spiraled down this very, um, depressive state and mental health. And, um, I suppose I didn't realize it at the time until I did, but I, um, started to struggle with a very, very bad eating disorder. Um, so it kind of goes hand in hand with all patterns of my life. So, um, my family being very supportive, you know, they kind of, I hate to say they didn't know what to do, but I feel like in a situation like that, you don't always. So um, my brain working how it does, I was always intrigued with fitness models. I always loved the look of, they were just so strong yet so beautiful, but they weren't this social norm of being real skinny. And at the time I was I was 18 and that was like the trend, like being like super skinny, um, that 2000s look. So I was just like doing so much research on the internet and my family was just like, listen, like, you know, like we're gonna, we're gonna bring you somewhere to get help. And me being me was like, no, I will fix this myself. I'll figure it out myself. Um, so I researched, um, I don't know how, I believe someone at the time, I was going to the gym, but I wasn't, um, hey, how are you? Um, sorry, someone came into the chat. Um, no so I was going to the gym, but I did not know anything about anything. I um, would spend like two hours on the treadmill. I didn't understand this world at all. So I had found um, a bodybuilding Uh, nutritionist and trainer if you will and my family came with me because they're like okay are you sure this is like the right thing and um my thing I still to this day struggle a bit I don't like help I like to do it myself so we went we met with the coach and I was so intrigued I was like reading my list I was like okay like I'm gonna be eating like 
you know, like on this competition diet, like 1800 calories a day, which sounds like the norm for an average human being, but, um, coming from an eating disorder, this was brand new. And I was like, food, like what, what is this? So I fell into it that way. Um, it was definitely a challenge at first. Um, not only mentally, but physically seeing my body change, I was more than thrilled, but I started to develop shoulders and like big quads. And that, that is the goal of fitness competitions. You know, it just was, it was very empowering at the same time because each day, um, the gym was more than just, Oh, I'm going to the gym to do arms. I like developed this whole brand new mindset and outlook, which was just so beautiful to me. And at the time it was, <laughs> I'm going to age myself, but, um, there was maybe just iPod iPad, uh, iPods with the music and stuff. Yeah, so like, iPods. It was literally, I started lifting, oh my God, 12, 13 years ago. So like, I don't even think I had one. So a lot of times I would just be at the gym, like just working out and listening to whatever the music's playing overhead. And it just was such a refreshing outlook. And still to this day, sometimes I'll, I'll go to the gym with like, no schedule kind of just to clear my head. And so I fell into it that way. And it was quite interesting because it really, really helped me um, in this sense until it didn't, because um, I don't know if you know anything about fitness competitions, but I do not. most <laughs> people, most people that get into them develop eating disorders. So it's kind mm -hmm. of like we're playing with fire, dancing around it. Um, so I had actually stepped away from that world maybe maybe about like five, six years ago. I just had the mindset again, hey, I want to be normal. I want to – it was a very strict diet. I'm like, hey, I want to eat a cookie if I want to eat a cookie. I want to have a glass of wine if I'm out with my friends. You know, I don't want to do two hours of cardio if I don't want to, and I didn't want to feel guilty if I, quote, unquote, messed up my diet. Right. So. Um, the fitness industry holds such a special place in my heart, but at a certain point, it no longer served me, um, a purpose where it was helpful. Um, I do always toy back with the idea of possibly doing a fitness competition with my new mindset and headspace, um, because I really just love it. It is just a show in itself. And that definitely translated and helped me with wrestling as well. Yes. And seeing, you know, doing my research, because uh, I've listened to some of your past interviews. Uh, yeah, you see, you. You're welcome. Like you've, 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 um, I love your mindset, you know, to be positive and stay motivated, you. your drive and your passion. You're willing to do anything that you set your mind to. Uh, what kind of stuff do you do you know, to get do there to get, do to get there <laughs> well for starters um rock bottom <laughs> and i say that um i say that with a smile and laugh um but in all seriousness um like i said most of my life i i don't even want to say unfortunately but i've dealt with depression anxiety eating disorders so it, it was just kind of at one point I just found myself literally at the lowest of the lows. And, you know, you, again, my family is super supportive, but you can't have someone want you to get better more than you want to, you know? So I hate to say I really was literally rock bottom. You know, my family, um, very fortunate to have them. So I was still living home and everything, but I just, um, found myself unable to keep a job. I just, um, was so depressed, could hardly get out of bed most days. Um, and, you know, I feel like not enough people talk about that because you're no. sitting here you're like, oh, you have such a positive outlook. And I'm just kind of like laughing because I'm like, okay, like I literally, I I had to go through the lowest of the lows. And again, you know, each person has a different story, but I feel like without my struggles and everything, I wouldn't be able to have this positive outlook and still, um, Still, it takes me um, a little bit some days um, to maybe get out of a funk if I'm in one. You know, like I said, I still struggle, uh, but I love reading. I love learning on my own terms. So I've read like so many self-help books. Um, 
things along those lines, but also just surrounding yourself with the right people has greatly um, helped my mindset and everything. You know, I feel like I was under this impression that just like, cause I knew someone for a long time or was friends with them that they had to remain in my life and nothing against that. But I saw some, some of my friends like, um, you know, maybe this was younger in life, but I saw them just always going out drinking and partying and my life was going this way. And it just like didn't mesh anymore. And I feel like learning to cut people off when it no longer serves you is crucial, whether it's friends or family, you know, but um, I'm a huge advocate for medicine as well. Um, I feel like so many people just are kind of like, well, that showbiz baby, like I'm depressed and have anxiety and depression. Like, let's just sweep it under the rug. And like, Hey, I did that for years until the carpet was too stacked up high and you're tripping over it. And now you can't even stay afloat. So, um, I wish I could give more, uh, positive or encouraging tips and stuff, but I hate to say that I really just had to struggle you know I had to really struggle to understand that there is a better way or once I realized that I no longer wanted to feel how I was feeling the only way at that point is to go up so I just feel like once you really understand and get to know yourself that is huge as well It is. And you've made it, you know, throughout, you know, through this journey. And now you're, you're pursuing professional wrestling and getting into it. Uh, Were you a fan growing up? Yes. And no, that is my favorite answer. Um, So wrestling growing up was around in my life, in my household. Um, I grew up with a brother. He's two years older than me. And then my cousins on my father's side are all boys. Um, There was two of them. So um, I was always the odd one out and they would practice wrestling moves on me around the house and stuff. And um, I literally just wanted to hang out with them all of the time. So like they would turn on wrestling and stuff and I would just sit there and like would watch and um they would always let me like be one of like the characters like for Christmas and stuff. I remember they would always get like little like wrestling rings with like the figures and stuff. And I would just like have my Barbies and stuff, but I was just like, I don't want those. I want to play with like what you guys are doing. So um, loosely it was. But I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't sit here and say that I was a diehard fan growing up as well. I knew loosely I understood what wrestling was I was intrigued by like the undertaker stone cold I love him um you know so like that that era but um I fondly remember my first memory of wrestling I can't recall how old I was but um I was actually in Texas and my aunt her her mother-in-law was there at the time and we were all just hanging out and I remember she was like, Oh, it's Monday night. Like, can I put on like wrestling or something? And we all just like my, I remember my father and brother being like, yeah, put it on. And I, all I remember at the time, I was like, I was like watching. I was like, Oh, like there's no women, but there was women like in roller skates, just like skating around the ring. (laughs) So I was like, interesting. I don't know what any of this is. And I suppose that is literally my first memory of wrestling, if you will. Yeah, and and it's kind of interesting that the role of women in wrestling has taken off, and it's cool to see more opportunities have opened up, especially with WOW, where you are currently. Uh, How did you get involved with with women in wrestling? Well, so my, again, like I said, my whole life um, is... I don't even want to say a happy accident anymore, but I'm a firm believer in the universe and everything is connected and intertwined. So back to my fitness modeling days, um, I had met these two twins. Um, They go by the name, well, their name is Lindsay and Lori. Um, You might know them as Miami Sweet Heat. Mm -hmm. I had met them um, at a fitness competition and I just remember chatting with them. I wasn't competing myself at the time. I was actually just there backstage helping out with stuff. Um, 
And I just remember talking to these girls and they had mentioned something about wrestling and I just kind of looked at them and I was like, oh, like you guys wrestle? And they're like, yeah, like, you know, like I know it's different, but like whatever. And I was like, oh, like, yeah, like I had a tryout with wrestling. Um, nothing came from it. And they're like, oh my God, girl, you have to get back into it. And I just remember staying the power of social media. We stayed in touch through social media. I don't recall how many years had passed. It was at least like five since then um, till now. And I just remember chatting with them online. I was, I actually had fallen back into wrestling. So I was training and they're like, girl, we have to tell you about this, this company. It's called wow. Women of wrestling. Like we just started working there. Like you would be a great fit, like send your stuff here. And I just remember, I was like, no, 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 I'm not ready. Like, I'm not going to send anything. And again, just stayed in touch with them. And I remember one night I was driving home from an independent show. And I was just like, in my car, just driving so sad because I was just like, damn, like, um, that was kind of a crummy match, kind of a crummy venue. It was just like, not what wrestling, what, what I feel like it, it was. should be. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I'm still out here trying to make a name for myself. This was maybe my, like, third match ever. So, you know, I understood you have to kind of build your way up. And I just remember um, driving home and the twins text me. They're like, okay, David McLean is going to call you soon. Like, answer your phone. And that is the owner, uh, one of the owners of Women of Wrestling, David McLean, um and I still kind of thought it was not a joke but I was just like yeah yeah like whatever and I'm driving and my phone rings and I, I answer it and it's like Nikki this is David McLean owner of women of wrestling how are you and I'm like oh okay like yeah and I'm like talking to him he's like okay like can you fly out tomorrow like to start filming and I was like wait what I was like um like, no, like, I, I still have to pack. Like, I could leave the next day. And I think, honestly, from the time I answered him on the phone, I had flew out to L.A. to start filming. Um, this was in September. Um, so it feels like everything happened overnight. And um, it's one of those things where people are like, oh, it's an overnight sensation. But mind you, my story started when I was four. So, you know, it feels like everything finally happened. But also, it was just the right time and the right place kind of thing. Because, you know, I had this brand new mindset and everything. So it was happened then. And I'm just having a blast, you know, like, um, last taping was a little rough for me just because I was brought in to it like um, maybe like two or three tapings after it's already been involved. So I didn't know my character. I didn't know any of this and it just was so much. And I was so new to wrestling still. And this time I have a year under my belt. I've been working the independence. Um, recently I have a booking like every weekend and stuff and it really, really helps. Um, so that has been super fun and great, you know, just really, really, I encourage anyone, um, if you do want this just to get out there. And I, I hate to say you do have to do some of the crappier shows, if you will, to kind of build your name and to be able to be on these larger shows, um, on the independence, but as well as, um, TV, it definitely helps you um, understand live audience and everything involved. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you work incredibly hard to get to where you are, and I'm so proud of you and your success. You. You're welcome. Uh, where can people find you on social media? Okay, so social media. I feel like I have so many nowadays that I can't keep up with them myself, but... Um, all my handles are going to be the same for like each. So uh, I have Nikki Duke on, what do I have? Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I spell my name very unique. It's N-I-K-I-I. -I, and my last name is Duke, D-U-K-E, as well as my WOW accounts. Um, for WOW, it's Ariel Sky underscore WOW. Um, and for those, I just have Instagram and Twitter for now. The WOW accounts and my personal, they're the same on each platform. Sure. Yeah, that's so cool. Hey, um, Ariel, this has been wonderful getting the chance to speak with you. you. 
uh, means a lot to me and to the listeners and, and viewers. Uh, you're more than welcome to come back on the show. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you yeah. for wanting to speak to me and get to know a little bit about my backstory and everything. I truly appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. I'll talk to you later. Let's Have a lovely day. Thank you. you. Bye-bye. This is Wrestling With Heart. I hope you found this podcast to be informative and entertaining. If you did, please hit the subscribe button and look out for the next edition.